The system isn't set up to support everybody. It's set up to further the ambitions of a tiny minority. It's insanity to live in a system that is the well-being of a few at the expense of so many. And it's just so obvious that we need to create systems where we all take care of each other and where power is shared. I went into psychedelic work with really high expectations and high ideals that this field was going to be different to other fields because psychedelics were these tools for enhancing connectedness to our deep selves and to each other and to nature and the wider world and interconnectedness and so surely the psychedelic field was going to be a shiny example of people working together and it's for it to be more about the we than the me and for it to be about really kind of coming together to do things differently, you know, do things in this new paradigm of community and togetherness and organising principle of care rather than of money. So I experienced a lot of disillusionment with the psychedelic field. From that deep experience of like shock at, is this really the way it's going to work? Like shock and amazement at late stage capitalist, colonial, extractive, money, power, for a few, extract from everybody else, and lack of honesty and lack of accountability. So in ASA we have this metaphor of psychological photosynthesis, where we imagine that the way a tree grows from mud and rocks and from that mud it draws up the mud and takes the water from it and turns it into sap that passes up through the tree and makes its leaves grow and its blossoms and its fruits. So you're turning the mud into flowers and that sounds really sugar coaty and like oh you know and bypassy and it's not though it takes a long time so I think my experience was like feeling like I was on very rocky soil, slowly, slowly taking in the lessons from that place and that, that soil and turning it into this intention for being part of creating places where people didn't feel that way, where people had a place where they could go, where they would feel safe and welcomed. Like any day of the week, there's somebody in ASA having a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with somebody else about what they really care about. It's about having the places where we can share with each other, where if you've got something that's burning a hole in your pocket and you really wanna to share it with someone, that you can, there's people there. What we cherish and reinforce is honest expression of real emotions as they are. So when somebody in a sharing circle is crying or full of rage and that emotion is there and is witnessed by the group and people get used to that. We're normalizing the experience of emotion and getting used to seeing it in each other without needing to fix it and getting used to expressing it and showing it to each other without feeling judged. When that experience keeps going for a while, you really start to see someone else's tears or their anger as such a gift that they're willing to show that to you because it means that you can show them yours as well. But really seeing each other's responses. I mean, we know that people, when they go to psychedelic experiences, and they, in, in group retreats, one of the things they love the most is in the integration circle afterwards is sitting around and looking at each other's faces, tear-stained faces, exhausted faces, because they've shown each other that emotion and they feel connected and bonded and respecting each other as human beings. Thank God we're able to show each other our messy sides, our messy selves. The world needs change. There's a certain amount of recognition of pain that initiates that change and so a big part of ASA is making space for each other's pain, each other's raw pain, honouring it and letting it like psychological photosynthesis transmute from mud into flowers gradually over time. After being within ASA, after working within ASA where it's a team of people working together we care about each other and we care about being ethical and we care about integrity and 
We care about the experience of people that come to us and make sure that they feel listened to and heard and feel that sense of holding that comes from a community of care and the connection to nature, the connection to something bigger helps us feeling, you know, small and in our place and knowing what we're here for, which is as guardians and stewards and as friends to each other, walking each other home, not as climbing some ladder. We've got to let go of that as a culture and stop idolizing the pursuance of power and money for their sake alone and realize that what was that saying? The, the, next, the next Buddha will be a Sangha, a, a community. We don't need any more um, gurus. We're coming in for some really, really challenging years and we've got some serious work to do together and we need to support each other. We need to have places where we feel safe and cared for now more than ever. Places of connection, places of belonging, really deeply because we're doing our own work at the roots. So it's not just like it's not flimsy, it comes from deep places of witnessing in each other in, in our vulnerability and in painful places and seeing that we're not perfect people, we're messy. We've got messy roots, we've got messy trunks, we're missing branches, we've got a scar here and there. We're gnarly trees and that provides shelter. You know, the gnarliness can be something that makes us wise and stronger arms to hold each other. Shelter from the storm is what our forest is growing into and what we hope it will be in the future.